This entire 200-foot radio tower was stolen from the station WJLX in Jasper, Alabama last week. That's a lot of scrap metal, and since AM towers aren't made of copper, much less gold, this whole story is kind of crazy. I mean, the station owners didn't even know the tower was gone until a landscaping crew went on site to trim down some grass. And now they're setting up a GoFundMe to raise 60,000 bucks for a new tower and transmitter. Now, Dad, you've been a radio engineer for like 40 years. Have you ever had someone steal a whole tower from you? And they have never heard of it, never seen it, it's never happened. And wouldn't you actually know if that happened too? Well, we definitely would know because the station would go off the air and we always want to know if the station's off the air. And uh, and like you said, the the it is a bizarre, it's a bizarre story. I mean, you have remote monitoring, plus you have <laughs> listeners, right? Yeah. And I would imagine at least one listener would be like, hey, I can't hear my station anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope no one ever steals one of my towers because it just is weird. That is an odd story. So one thing I noticed that you and I have talked about in the past is it's WJLX 1240 AM. It's a one kilowatt AM station but it has an FM repeater mm -hmm. at 101.5. And when I went to look it up, it, if you go to the website, it's 115FM or something like that, dot com. Mm -hmm. or what, it has the FM station number, not mm -hmm. the AM. So it sounds like an FM station, mm -hmm. but in fact, it's not. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I haven't looked hard into that, but, the, but when you license a translator, you usually license it to the station. The AM stations would tra uh, get a translator, but it's tied to the AM operation. If you turn the AM off, the translator goes off. So that's why the FCC won't allow his FM station to be on because it's tied together, which would mean they probably should be simulcasting. So, so you actually you have you have some of these. Too. I have some of these. You have some of them where there's we love translators. Yeah. And we we visited one uh, when we went to the the TV tower site last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. And uh, they had a little FM broadcast thing, but that's not the main station. Right. So yep. how how do like what is the advantage of doing that? Like what if I just want an FM station? Why can't I just yeah. buy an FM station? Well, you wish. There's a lot of AM guys out there, I'm sure, that wish they could just convert. They had great translator results. Translators stay consistent 24 hours a day, same power level, same coverage. AMs might have way better coverage in the daytime than the translator, but at night they go off. Some of them go off the air, and some of them their signal gets reduced. So translators are, are a, a buffer for that for a lot of stations, and especially in the smaller markets. But why, why can't you just <clears throat> give up the AM? Like, why can't you just well, say, oh, the, FCC, please let me <clears throat> cut off the AM yeah, and I'll just yeah. do the FM? Well, there, there's a history to that, which I don't know the full, but when you uh, license stations, take frequencies off the market, you, there's a big reason to do it. And this one was to help the AMs, not to, re not to replace AMs, but to help the AMs with their revenue models and, and uh, you know, staying viable. So... If you just let them turn off the AM, then you didn't. The purpose wasn't fulfilled. And so. you, being an active radio engineer, you, you you immediately alarm bells went off, and you went to some forums or Facebook, yeah, other places. Can, yeah. Like yeah. what is it, what is the buzz underground? Well, you know the the thing. It's it's it's. I'm uncomfortable talking about it because we all operate <laughs> stations, right? But uh, but the this points to a lot of what the AM part of the AM world that won't be addressed by putting AM radios in cars. And that is the, the maintenance and ongoing uh, facility work. AMs were, all, most of them were older than the FMs, you know, and so the towers are older and all this stuff. And so you see a story like that and you're like, well, who would own an AM station and not monitor it and not know that their tower had collapsed, fallen down or whatever. We had another tower this week that fell. It, it got hit by a construction truck and came down and recorded pictures and you know, here's the thing. And so here's a tower that was stolen and we haven't seen any pictures. Who doesn't have a phone? <laughs> Take some pictures and send them. Yeah. Uh, but, but the pictures, did they cut it, cut the guy wires? Did they torch it to get it uh, cut up fast? And I mean, there would be evidence on the ground. There would be evidence on the ground if the tower fell, did it crush the fence that's supposed to be there? You know, there's so many things that the questions come up. And so that's what, uh, it's, it's almost worth a trip down there this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the, the website actually says it was stolen without a trace. Yes, now, I remember yeah. when I was younger, it was, you know, I, I think it was after I interned for Camwax or something, you guys took down the tower. Yeah, we took the tower And that was a down. very controlled, very planned out. Mm -hmm. It took months of planning, and mm -hmm. you still had some issues. And mm -hmm. you can, if you go to the tower site today, I'm sure yeah. you can see so you where the tower fell and hit some things. Hit a few trees. Those trees probably didn't recover. Do you think anybody uh, could take down a tower, a 200-foot tower in this case, it, without any trace? Without any trace, uh, and it was done within the last 24 hours. It's just, <laughs> that, that Again, that just makes me uncomfortable. But to say that's like I can't imagine 
how that could happen. I mean, yeah. what if you had one of those military helicopters? Oh, uh, no, that you would a guy be... guy take off the bolts at the bottom. That, and there's the, there's the alien theory, too, that that's <laughs> some, some reason they needed an old tower that was... <laughs> You know, an old 200 footer. <laughs> exactly. With a one kilowatt. Or 199. And they they stole likely. the transmitter too, but yeah. like what, yeah. what, what would that be worth? A used one yeah, kilowatt AM it's, transmitter. It's hard to say what the old one was, but I mean, if it was an old tube type, it would be almost worthless except the people who love to rebuild them and <laughs> use them for ham radio stuff. So. so 500 bucks on eBay or something. Yeah. But yeah. I also noticed, so they, they set up a GoFundMe, but you know, you, you know, a lot of guys in the radio industry and you travel around quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. If if one of your friends had a station that went off the air, like isn't it kind of typical that you'd say, "Hey, I have a spare transmitter. You can use this until." Yeah, uh, and and probably you know, it's, it's it's likely that he could get back on the air pretty quick. I mean, I, again, ham guys come in to get an AM station operational with a wire hung, you know, put some wooden sticks or fiberglass sticks and run that cable across the. Fa- I mean, you know, you could do it, you ham guys, but we could help him get this guy back on the air. Uh, the borrowed transmitter is the only tricky part because um, if you got a spare, do you want to give it up? But there is a chance that somebody could come up with one and uh, and and get get him going. You know, so you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, another thing that I remembered seeing when I was g- going through the forums, I think on Reddit and a couple other places, I saw posts about it. Was uh, someone had a video from 11 years ago saying that uh, the they had the, in their car the FM station was broadcasting, and then they pan up to the AM station, show the tower, and then they switch to the AM and it was off the air. <laughs> and uh, so apparently with this particular station, that may have been a problem mm-hmm. in the past. Yeah. I know you look up, the FCC has all these public records, and, mm-hmm. and you looked up some of those records. Mm-hmm. Do you know, have you ever heard of this station before, or did you see anything fishy I, in I've those not, records? I've not heard of it before, but I did poke around at the sites that have information in the FCC filings. And 2017, I think it was, there was a filing that the station went uh, silent, basically, to, because their transmitter was not operable or intermittently operable. And then they reported that the uh, station had a, uh, a heat problem and that it was starting to stay on. The temperatures must have been changing in the area. Yeah. So Alabama, you, it gets hot so you see summer. stuff, and it's like, that doesn't speak well of the facility or the transmitter there. So yeah. having it go on and off, I mean, you have to be on the air enough to not have to do something to address it or stay yeah. silent. But, but, or you have to address uh, the issue of I want to be silent, which the FCC will give you like a, at least a year mm-hmm. to figure out what you're doing. And, and uh, those are not uh, uncommon in, in the world of broadcasting. But it, but it was interesting to see that. And you go, wow, and then maybe somebody else came in and took o- ownership and they're trying to corral that wild horse, you know, to make mm-hmm. it workable. And they're having trouble uh, keeping it on the air. And then you would get why if you have it on the air once a day, and you keep working at it, you could have that translator on. Yep. You know what I mean? So there, there's there's ways that can work, but it does tell you that there's a struggle. And you have a picture or whatever that was, that would be the, what, what's the last known picture of that tower, right? <laughs> was it last week? Was yeah. it two weeks ago? Was yeah, look up, uh, there's, there's that citizen uh, satellite network that yeah. takes pictures from oh, overhead, yeah. see yeah. when the last picture was with a complete tower. Because yeah. some people, I mean, people are speculating online. Yeah. Somebody was saying that over the past five years, people have been slowly dismantling it or the past six months or whatever it is. <laughs> but the point being like, it's hard to have without a trace, a tower removal. As, as quickly uh, in quickly. less than a day, yeah, yeah. Especially when nobody knows anything about it, and there's like a, a poultry processing plant right up the street, and yeah. something else. Like, there's yeah. got to be somebody that saw a big truck, yeah, with somebody, a bunch of well, metal. Or, yeah, and, and again, you, <laughs> there's a lot of ways to take a tower down. It's just not something quickly that I could imagine wouldn't have a trace. And so, if you visited it once a quarter, you could picture by the next quarter a site where that is. It could totally hide everything that happened. Mm-hmm. If it was, you know, that late, but not something that was within days or weeks. And we assume this was within a day or so because yeah. you, you should know your station's on the air. So. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, what, what, what do you do to try to make people not steal your towers? Is it actually, like, is it legal to just go up and pull I, somebody's tower out of the well, ground? Well, you know, first of all, if you're on the air, that's still a dangerous, tingly thing, right, to be, be doing <laughs> that. So you're like, well... Uh, and like the the guys who had the tower taken down by the truck, you know, you could do things that could get a tower to fall. That's not that hard. And then with a little bit of investigation, you could probably figure out to make it fall the way you want. Mm-hmm. But then you still got to cut it all up, and, and that iron is not that uh, light. You got to get it on trucks or whatever, get it out of there, and you're out in fields and you're driving. I mean, just the fact you'd have tires and it just... 
That stuff is weird. So we're going to find out more, I'm sure, in the coming days because it became a national story. Once so. you have a scrap tower, is there like a black market? Like, do you buy scrap towers from people? No, but scrap scrap metal is pretty easy. That's everywhere has their scrap metal places, but you just don't get that much. But that is a heavy uh, 200 feet of, uh, of that metal. Uh, it, it, if it was hollow, I don't think the tower would have lasted this long. <laughs> uh, but maybe it did, and it was hollow, and it was easier to you know, take out in a small truck. But so. copper, like it's an AM tower. Does an AM tower yeah, have the, a lot of copper on it? Yeah, well, that's the other thing is like how much copper was taken. I took the transmitter and I doubt that they took the tower and it was connected and he pulled it and the transmitter came along. I mean, they would have had to <laughs> go in like there. It's not like an ATM where you... They would, and if you're a theft of a tower, you think you would take as much copper. And so it's all those details. Uh, like I said, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Just an odd story that we'll keep an eye on. So for now, the, the guy said it was stolen and we're going with that. Well, we'll see. Mm-hmm.